shoot thousands of goblins in the face with a flaming crossbow, throw gigantic meteors at gross anthropomorphic mushrooms, and hang out with a queen horse that's literally made out of diamonds. That's Tiny Tina's Wonderlands in a nutshell. And yeah, if it looks like a reskinned Borderlands 3, that's because it is. But that doesn't end up being such a bad thing. The hilarious writing and stellar voice acting performances combine beautifully with the trademarked looter shooter mayhem to create something extremely memorable. This fantasy spin on the Borderlands formula delivers the large scale adventure I dreamt of playing ever since playing the Borderlands 2 DLC that inspired it. And although it very much plays it safe in a lot of ways, battling through it has been an absolute blast. Roll for initiative! Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a direct follow-up to 2013's Borderlands 2 Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep DLC. As a game within a game, you play through a simulated tabletop role-playing campaign called Bunkers and Badasses, a sort of alternate reality Dungeons and Dragons that replaces generic fantasy tropes with absurdity, gratuitous violence, and tons of guns regardless of whether they're setting appropriate or not. But that's the magic of this larger-than-life looter shooter RPG, which throws caution to the wind and embraces chaos and nonsense in favor of ludicrous and memorable moments. The best thing about a Borderlands game is I know I'm going to laugh as I loot, and Wonderlands is no exception. You never know when you need to escape a personal hell! The excellent laugh-out-loud writing is elevated by one of the strongest comedy casts of any game, with Ashley Birch returning as the lovably obnoxious Tiny Tina, <laughs> Will Arnett as the main bad guy, with all this soul energy flowing to me, I can create all sorts of new nightmares. Andy Samberg is the over-eager dumb party member. Suspiciously normal. And Wanda Sykes as the rules-obsessed player. She's ruining my favorite part of killing things, which is that they shut up and stay dead. Across the board, the voice acting and comedy writing are better than they've ever been in this series. And even without all the action-packed looting and shooting, Freedom Fighters! What an the adventure would be worthwhile just for the memorable characters and hilarious moments. Those catapults take hundreds of goblin hours to construct. I'm out here creating jobs, you know. There's a mission where you try to figure out how to remove a character's impenetrable plot armor, another where the characters get way too suspicious about a background character in a blue hat, and another where you straight up kill a bunch of Smurfs. The shenanigans never cease, and fans of tabletop role-playing like myself will find plenty of references and inside jokes that are catnip for veteran dice rollers. That said, even while the tomfoolery is ever amusing, the main story ends up being one of the weaker parts of the package. The the fact that the whole adventure takes place within a game being played by Borderlands characters has little to no impact on anything, and that leaves the proceedings feeling pretty frivolous rather than innovative or subversive. It's not quite up to the standards the Borderlands series has set, but man, it's still so dang funny. It is Queen Buttstaff, the most beautiful and perfectest ruler in all the land. Of course, most people come to Borderlands expecting a whole heck of a lot of guns to play with, and Wonderlands does not disappoint in that regard. Per usual, you'll find thousands of variations of randomly generated weapons with silly and insane perks, like an automatic crossbow that feels like ye old machine gun, or a shotgun that turns into a fireball you throw at an enemy when it runs out of ammo. The transition from over-the-top science fiction to over-the-top high fantasy has surprisingly changed very little about the way Borderlands feels to play, though there are some notable exceptions, such as grenades being replaced with much more interesting spells, and ultimate abilities shifting to a more magical flavor like summoning giant tornadoes of ice. Other than that, the differences are largely cosmetic changes to combat, so Borderlands fans should feel right at home in the Wonderlands. The similarity to Borderlands 3 is good news in that combat in Wonderlands is generally fantastic, with crazy looking enemies, challenging boss fights, and so much insanity happening on screen that oftentimes your screen looks like a rainbow puked into a tornado that exploded into a hundred smaller tornadoes. The sliding, shooting, and casting in Wonderlands is is a seriously good time. The downside of all that chaos is that sometimes it's difficult to know what's even happening, like this insanity. Her mind's supposed to go to the corpse. Oh. 
The only other real gripe I have is that it changes so little from Borderlands 3 that even with the setting being completely different, I felt like I'd played it all before in the decade of time I've been enjoying the series already. For example, the Goliath enemies that have been around since Borderlands 2 have the very specific behavior of entering a rampage if you shoot their heads too much. Once enraged, they run around attacking everything, and every time they score a kill, they evolve into a more powerful monster. In Wonderlands, these Cyclops dudes behave almost identically. That's not to say that there aren't any surprises, but the amount of reskinned or reused enemies and ideas definitely made me raise an eyebrow on more than one occasion. Something that's completely new, however, is the charming overworld, where instead of running and gunning in first person, you walk around a map as a cartoonish avatar, exploring the world and finding new activities and side quests to complete. It's easy to navigate, and discovering new areas and unlocking new pathways in this silly board game landscape is a great and inspired way to break up the fast-paced combat and explosions with dumb gags, like one part where you've got to get past a cheese puff that's been dropped onto the board by the Bunker Master herself. Unfortunately, it also enables one of my least favorite parts of the Wonderlands package, combat encounters. These are a completely underwhelming new feature that sticks you in a claustrophobically small arena and throws some randomly generated monsters at you until you fill up a murder meter, earn some loot, and move on. You'll run into these bland little battles while exploring the overworld as filler during part of a side quest, or even in the endgame, which uses it in a horde mode. The main issue I have with combat encounters is that unlike most of the Wonderlands campaign, where you're exploring a large hub world and looking for hidden loot and secrets to discover, these things stick you in a box and essentially put you on a timeout until you've killed enough things. It's unimaginative filler that only succeeds in throwing a wet blanket onto a formula that didn't need slowing down. When you finish the story after around 20 hours and unlock Wonderlands' primary endgame activity, the Chaos Chamber, you'll discover it's basically just a variation on combat encounters. That's a bit of a disappointment, but thankfully it works a bit better as an endgame activity, owing to its high degree of difficulty and roguelike mechanics thrown in to make things more interesting. Not to mention, it's definitely the most rewarding activity from a loot and XP perspective. Speaking of endgame content, Wonderlands has quite a grind available for those looking for more to do. Not only is there a nigh limitless pool of loot to chase, but myth ranks, which allow you to overlevel your character and unlock unique buffs, give you quite a mountain to hike up if you aren't finished smacking people in the face with an enchanted frying pan. I don't think that the Chaos Chamber endgame mode will be enough to keep me grinding for long after the campaign, but with at least four pieces of DLC announced by Gearbox already, it's good to know that my leveling and min-maxing won't go to waste if I decide to stick with it. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a fantastic take on Borderlands' tried-and-true looter-shooter formula. As spin-offs go, it sticks dangerously close to its past successes, which at times felt a bit unoriginal, and some of the new stuff it tries, like procedurally generated combat encounters, didn't pan out terribly well. Where it really distinguishes itself is in the excellent writing, hilarious performances from an all-star cast, and ridiculous combat that continues to shine brightly, making this tabletop-inspired explosion fest absolutely worthwhile. Prepare to enter a world of fantasy! For more, check out our reviews of Ghostwire Tokyo and Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. And for everything else, stick with IGN.